Okay, if I get nervous and I'll quiet, just let me know. Um, so uh, I guess I'll introduce myself. Um, as she said, my name is Heidi Driscoll. I'm uh, the Assistant Superintendent of Schools for Situate Public Schools. I've been there for um, two and a half years. My previous job, I was at Southeastern Regional as the Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment. I was there for 13 years. Prior to that, I worked for Taunton Public Schools, and um, I've been an English teacher, an English department chair, and an elementary principal. Um, and so I'm 92 years old. <laughs> uh, my, my other thing that I do, or I do a lot of things, um, I write grants for all, help people write grants for all sorts of things, still some vocational schools. Um, I'm a visiting lecturer at Bridgewater State University for the education department. Um, so courses like literacy across the curriculum or intro to teaching, things like that. That's what I do for them when I can. I took a year off of doing that when I started at Situate because it was me. Um, and my background before that was I was a vocational student. I was a data processing major. And yeah, in 1990, <laughs> and I went to New Bedford um, Vocational School, New Bedford, Greater Bedford Regional Vocational Technical High School, and I absolutely loved it. And I'm so thankful um, for what they've done for me. And I think because of my experience there, um, that's why I love being a teacher and teaching and being in the field of education. So through my career, I. Um, uh, I guess I've had a really wide variety of experience. I don't think my resume could capture that, but I think that anecdotes and stories do. So if um, you have any questions, which I'm sure you do, you can just raise on your hand and I would love to answer them. And just so you know, sometimes if somebody asks a pretty long question, I'm, uh, I'll take some notes so I can try to address it appropriately. Don't be shy. <laughs> yes. Why Minuteman? Why do you want this job? That's a great question. Um, I want to be at Minuteman because I want to be in vocational education. Um, and this is the Cadillac of uh, vocational education as far as I'm concerned. You get, or a better car. I mean, I like Cadillac. But, um, <laughs> you, are, you are known for excellence. Um, when I was approached, I wasn't looking for a job. Um, that's why you won't see me on LinkedIn or school or whatever they are. Um, but I was approached by a couple other vocational superintendents and they told me some stories and said I should Google Minuteman. And um, they said, um, <laughs> they, said uh, they said Minuteman needs you. And they said, uh, Minute Me Needs You, and you love teaching, you love vocational schools, and Minute Me Needs Love. Yeah. And um, that's not to say I'm nice all the time, okay? <laughs> but that's, I was like, what are you talking about? I just got here. And then um, a couple other people approached me to tell me the stories of Minute Me in, And I decided this is, I hope, where I'd like to be because I, I would love to serve your community. Um, I consider myself a public servant, and if I'm selected to serve this community, that's what you'll get. Yeah. What do you feel the role of a superintendent is? That's a great question. Um, I feel that the role of a superintendent is to lead the district and to let teachers teach. I think that a superintendent's job is to remove barriers from success. So it isn't to tell you how to do your job. It's for me to hear, hear the obstacles 
And then I have to figure out with the central office team and with administration, how do we remove these obstacles that teachers or students have? Students have from learning, teachers have from teaching. Um, and that's, I think, how things get done. The, of course, publicity, communication, making sure that we have excellent enrollment, those things that happen outside of the classroom, um, that would be where, where I come in. You're welcome. Yes. Um, you mentioned that you Googled us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that was a really embarrassing time. <laughs> no, it really was. The school was not built on that one year and one bad leader. So um, this place was really something prior to, to that. So I'm interested in doing a little bit more research on um, the people, the next person to lead us. So have you had a difficult situation with your staff or you know, if, I think if we had done a little bit more homework previously, we would have found some information that would have guided us in a different direction, perhaps. So I'm wondering if you are willing to share anything like that. Yeah, in your that that's a great that's a great question. Um, I will say my in my research of Minuteman. state of Massachusetts for your achievement. Um, so that was, that to me speaks for what Minuteman is. And that's why I say, I want to hear the stories. Um, I, I would say you're, you're more than welcome to look up uh, anything that you'd like to know about me. I don't think there's anything you would find. Um, for those of you who are on the um, initial interview committee, I created this thing called um, the his, my history of commitment. And it has newspaper articles, letters of recommendation, um, particular artifacts from achievements that I've had as an administrator and within schools. And it goes from my current um, letters of recommendation all the way back to, I will say, at 1994 with my vocational um, English teacher writing me a letter of recommendation to go to college. Um, I am a committed, dedicated, passionate person, and that's not to say we wouldn't have disagreements at times or not see eye to eye, but I can assure you that we would come out um, with respect for each other, no matter what that bump the rules was. But if there's any specific topic you, you want me to answer about or... I don't, I don't know. Honestly, I'm just looking if you were sharing any of that or like how you overcame like a challenging time. You know, I think we all can talk about how we've overcome the year um, in different versions, I would say, within the room. But that's, um, I guess, I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah, well, I hope I can help to continue to get beyond whatever that was and rejuvenate um, where you have been in the past. All the signs I even see today as I'm walking around celebrating the achievements that the school has had. Um, Miniman is known to be a, a top caliber vocational school for, for academics and vocational programming. And I hope that I can help continue that legacy. Thank you. Of course. Yes. How would you describe your leadership style? So I would describe my leadership style as a collaborative leadership style. Um, I know that I am not an expert on everything, so I surround myself with experts to become as most informed as possible on whatever topic or decision that I'm making. Um, I think that, uh, so when I teach my classes at Bridgewater, I always tell them that I teach um, using the constructivist theory, which means um, action, your experience is everything. So I need to use the experience and the stories that we have together to inform what our practice is going forward. I need to hear if someone is having a very positive or very negative experience in the moment, I have to be willing and open to hear those stories mm -hmm. so that we can make choices to move forward to remove barriers for everybody to their own success. Um, in Situate, 
Um, and I would encourage you, please reach out to any teacher from Southeastern Regional, from say, please reach out to people who I've worked with. I feel like without me standing in the room, they might tell you what my leadership style is, a little, little different. Um, I think that uh, I'm not a, a top-down uh, leader. Some, I can give you an example of something that I would not do. Something that um, is very common with like curriculum people is they'll show up and say, here's your template for lesson planning. Everybody has to fill out this piece of paper and this is how we lesson plan. I know um, the difference between paperwork and compliance and real teaching. So I am not someone who would ever say, fill this out, now check the box, we've done it. I wanna make sure that we are doing whatever we can to let people do their jobs and have meaningful experiences in classrooms. Uh, yeah, thanks. How would somebody who works under you describe you? Oh, uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it depends who it is, I guess. But um, How about your superintendent that my, you work for? My superintendent who I work for, he would describe me as his right hand. Um, absolutely. So when I arrived um, in Situate, I was the assistant superintendent of curriculum instruction and professional development. By the end of my first year, my title was changed to the assistant superintendent of schools. Um, I'm on the MSBA, um, and obviously you are through that process, but you know what that entails. Um, I'm on the MSBA working group. I work with every facet of the district alongside my superintendent. We have six schools. Um, he would probably say I'm uh, tireless. Um, my best quality and my worst quality is my passion for education. Um, and I think people who work with me, um, I, I don't really feel like people work for me, but I do feel like people, they would say I work with height. Um, I don't think they would, that's a difference, right? Um, and I would encourage you, all of you, um, please reach out and, and ask people. I have worked in lots of places. I think um, people respect me as a leader and appreciate the collaborative nature that I take to, the, to our work together. Um, I guess that's the short version. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Can you talk about a high point in your career and also a low point in thinking what you learned from it? Absolutely. I'll, I'll talk about the low part. <clears throat> So when I was at Southeastern Regional um, during the pandemic, there were three of us who were basically in the building, and well, four of the facilities director too, who were in the building nearly right away. Um, that was scary. That was very scary. I was like, hey, I thought I did curriculum. No, nope, no, nope, we were we were in the trenches of that. When we brought the kids back, I took um, all remote learning and anyone who was good, you know how they had that group C that was all separate. I mean, um, that was uh, that was mine on top of everything else we made. It, it was quite a, we did what we needed to do to support kids, but the phone calls came to me. The phone calls of the parents who were absolutely heartbroken that we could even fathom opening schools because children will be hurt. Then I would receive the next phone call from a parent saying, how are the schools not open because children would be, and, and it was the most sad, emotionally gut-wrenching experience I have had as an educator. And I had to love each one of those parents up, make sure we did the very best we could for their kids. But it was emotionally, and exhausting. It was operationally taxing. Um, and that was, that was a lot. That was a lot. And especially, well, you, you know, in vocational programming, I mean, uh, you know, it, it, it proved incredibly uh, more challenging than, than anything else I've ever done. Um, and I, I hope 
that the high point in my career is, is yet to be seen. Um, I hope it would be here uh, with all of you. Uh, I don't feel like I've had a, a peak or any uh, specific thing that would be one achievement. I've loved every job that I've had um, and I love the people who I work with. And I hope that um, my peak uh, hasn't been seen. Yet. A question. I'm wondering about, um, I've been here for about two years after a career in the media, and I so I saw it right before this big explosion of Dr. Dawson, and I think a lot of people have been heard or somehow it's been so tough. I felt the tumult, and I, I traveled back between the academic side and the shop side, and I wonder what from, you know, if you get this job, what you'll do to help this group heal? Because I feel like we keep losing teachers. And, I mean, everybody's sort of, we're all good actors. Everyone's trying their best, but it's still hard. And I, and I think it's because we don't have the new person in place that everyone can get behind. Well, so I think the first thing I need to do is listen to each of your individual stories um, to hear how we need to heal together. Um, and I think that's what I was alluding to when I answered a question over here. Um, people know Minuteman deserves to be happy and move forward um, because it's a place that um, is high achieving and it's so wonderful and the teachers are amazing. Your staff, I, I mentioned this at my first interview, if I'm not mistaken, 80% of the staff here are veteran staff. I mean, the staff knows what you need here. So I hope um, that what I could do before I start is start literally meeting with the administrators one-to-one, -one, meeting with staff members, hearing the stories of what you need and where you are, um, and then hopefully I could formulate a plan. Um, so I'm gonna give you an example of what I, I did in Situate. Um, so Situate had, um, a similar shift in um, staff members. Um, and uh, when I was hired, the first thing I did um, was have one-to-one -one meetings with every single department chair, every single principal, um, every, basically all of the organizers. Um, and, and I listened and I asked them, what is the one thing that we need to sustain in situate? And what is something that needs to be worked on? And people had way more than one thing for each of those. Um, so what happened through those conversations is I started to hear patterns. And I think I was hired in April. So I, I talked to people, but, you know, I didn't start till July 1. Um, one of the things that came up was this professional development committee. Um, people who were on the committee hated being on the committee. People who um, got uh, were in the professional development that the committee planned hated that. They hated all the professional development. It was this weird, contentious thing that came from all these different groups. Um, a couple other common um, things that popped up were teacher evaluation. They used different tools for different people and things like that. So when we got to our administrative retreat, um, I said, okay, how do we tackle all of this? Um, and what we did was we established professional leadership teams um, and each had a separate focus and a task. Um, and that's how we, do you want me to answer that? Would that be fun? <laughs> um, we, <laughs> I can tell she's a teacher. <laughs> you said that's your class. I'm very teacher. Um, but so we established these committees and the committees were not all the same people. We made sure there was a broad range. So an administrator, a teacher, a, you know, larger group. Um, and two and a half years later, now we have these teams of experts that everybody knows who to go to. Instead of taking a small group of leaders and spreading them out thin, expecting them to do everything, we made collaborative groups of many stakeholders with lots of lenses and the job got done. Um, so our evaluation system, we overhauled it within the first, um, I guess like three months, the teachers were the ones 
who ended up creating resources to train everybody. It was, it was huge and it was great. And we still have our professional leadership teams now. They shift a little bit every year, um, but it's to make sure that we all feel heard and the priorities that everybody elevates, um, we're addressing and not um, pushing them behind. And that one activity, even though it's more than one activity, really brought people together and, and helped them feel like, okay, we're moving forward and there's some positive forward momentum. And if you'd like to hear teachers talk about that, I have a clip from a school committee meeting that talks about those that I can share with, with any of you. Because those are all recorded. Yes, hi. hi. Um, what's your view on athletics? My view on athletics? I mean, I love athletics. <laughs> so uh, my personal experience is I had, I thought I had dance and theater kids. My daughter's a dancer. My, my youngest son danced for 10 years. My oldest son did theater. And then all of a sudden they turned into wrestlers. <laughs> oh my God. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now, now I'm a sports mom. And um, I go to wrestling meets and there's things happening, you know, and um, it's, been, it's, uh, it's, the most wonderful growth experience for my own children. Um, I'm a huge supporter of athletics in the schools because I feel like it's a part of the whole school experience. Um, something that when I when I was in Taunton Public Schools, athletics was huge because it's a city. And you're the Taunton Tigers, right? And then when I went to Southeastern, that was something that made me a little sad. We didn't have the town, you know, it wasn't the town feeling. And now in Situate, they they have. The Sidgwick Steelers, they, they're the same type of intensity. I wish and I hope that there is a way for us at Minuteman to bring that <laughs> spirit of athletics, even though it's a regional district. Um, I think we probably need some bleachers, right? <laughs> yeah, things like that, right? Um, so I know there's work to be done there. Um, and uh, I think it's crucially important. Yes, we have a very high population of children with special needs, like at 40%. Mm -hmm. So have, I don't know if that's typical of most um, vocational schools. Um, I think we're a little on the higher side. I might be wrong. A lot on the higher side. She's shaking her head over here. She knows the numbers. So how, do you, how would you, not to say that we don't want those children, but they have their own challenges and challenge our staff. A lot. <laughs> so, uh, what is your experience with that? So, my experience is I'm a, I'm a, I have a special education director license. Um, when I was a grad student, I did my internship as with the, the dean of the special education department. So, I, I know my, my stuff when it comes to that. Um, Southeastern had a little bit of a higher special education population. Um, here, your number is pretty high, but as uh, you know, I definitely asked a lot of questions about that today while we had our time. Um, I would need to know what those numbers mean because an IEP doesn't mean you need a substantially <coughs> separate classroom. Does it mean you need behavioral support? Does it need, you mean you need support with executive functioning? Um, I would need to know who those kids are mm -hmm. and what our patterns are that we need mm -hmm. support for. And then I would make sure that we um, address those. Um, fun fact, uh, in, uh, at Southeastern, um, when I started, um, and that was a very long time ago, I didn't, I, I didn't do as much research, I guess. And they were telling me, hey, we're in great shape. And it turns out at South, Southeastern at that time, they were about to be taken over um, oh, by the state. They de and they were in the 19th percentile. And I said, oh my goodness, that's... You probably should have looked at that before, but here we were. Um, we were recognized in the state's race to the top report because our students made the largest gains in math and English, primarily because of our special education population gains um, in the last chunk of time in race to the top. So I want to say it was 13, 14. Um, and it's because we looked at reading literacy as a foundation and 
I guess we'd call them soft skills, but they're not, they're life skills that everyone needs. Um, and we made sure that we have the same expectations across all areas um, for behavior, um, skills, and commitment. And we, the numbers showed it. Um, you can see that on my publicly posted resume. There's a little bullet on one of those that with the statistics. Um, we, we were very proud of, of the work we did there. And if there is work to be done here, um, I think I can draw from some of that experience um, and transfer to Nancy, go ahead. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> what might your entry plan look like? So my entry plan would be to hear the stories first. I can't say I'm going to come in and we are going to do X, Y, Z with teaching or learning. I have work to do to know what you need. So I can't pretend to know that. I do know that there are some priorities, like you have um, some empty buildings, right, that we need to attend to. So there's some um, big picture things that have to be taken care of. Um, my entry plan would be to meet and know and hear the stories to develop an entry plan. I assume right now your strategic plan is something that is not fully, um, <clears throat> I don't know, what, what do we say? Formed? In Formed? Oh, right. In existence. So I would want to take the time to make sure that it isn't just me saying, here's what I think we need to do. We have to, I have to hear those voices. I'm actually looking around and seeing some familiar faces. Um, yeah, so, so that's listening and then making a plan that everybody can be invested in. And I really feel like it's important to go slow, to go fast. You have such high achievement and such high performing teachers. There's no crisis. There's no teaching crisis. <laughs> so we, we really just need to take a breath and figure out what do, what do we all <clears throat> need to do and make a plan, hopefully a strategic plan um, from there. <clears throat> Do you have any concerns about kind of the vast responsibilities of being a superintendent? Like, is there anything that kind of scares you? Like, <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> um, well, right now, as an assistant superintendent of schools, I have had baptism by fire. I attend every school committee meeting, respond to public comment. Um, we, um, you know, the night meetings, all, all those things, the budget, what, um, what would be different for me is being the face. Um, so right now, I, I have my current superintendent who he is the face of our district. I'm, I'm his partner, but I'm the sidekick. I'm the, you know, uh, we do everything together. We support each other. I hope here um, that I would have a partner um, who would be able to give me and help me with the institutional knowledge that I don't have. Uh, because that's my biggest um, missing piece. And anyone who takes institutional knowledge for granted, they're in trouble when it comes to leadership, especially as a superintendent, because this isn't just this year. It is Minutemans. It's the legacy of Minuteman. So um, I guess uh, I wouldn't say there's anything that scares me about it, because I feel like I can surround myself with people who can support me. Other vocational superintendents, the staff and administrators here. If you're willing to, um, yeah, good question. Yeah. Have you had a chance to review any of the school committee meetings? Some of them, most of them are taped. What are your thoughts about the wide range of affluent cities and towns that we belong to? Well, I definitely watched your, some of your school committee meetings because I wanted to watch who my future bosses would be. Um, I did. Um, and there is a wide range of towns, and I feel like Minuteman has a place to serve all those communities. And I think those communities need us to produce uh, tradespeople. Uh, and uh, I think I would look forward to building personal relationships 
with um, the superintendents and town administrators from all these other towns. Um, the only one I personally know right now is Julie Hackett. Um, we work together in Taunton. Um, other than that, I need to, that's a part of what I, maybe a part of my entry plan. I need to know all of these people. Um, I do know from working both at comprehensive schools and at vocational school districts that there's the feeling of you're taking our kids or um, I wanna work hard to make sure that is not the relationship here and that we are serving the students who we should best serve no matter where they come from. And I know that's a tall order, but um, I think that that's the work on the outside of the classroom. Um, that should be a priority. <clears throat> Um, so the job posting came out today for our next new principal. So yes. I'm guessing you will be tasked with hiring them. What I you? hope so. <laughs> I, so. Actually, that's the scary part. That actually scared me because I saw the posting come out and I said, oh my goodness, I really need to be involved with that if that's going to be me. So I hope I will be. If that so that's my question. What are you looking for in terms of a principal for our government? Well, I would love to talk to the committee um, I'm assuming there will be a robust committee of stakeholders who need to talk about what we need in a principal. Your current acting principal, I'm sure will be able to say, hey, here's where we need support. I, I don't know. I have not been in the office. I haven't seen the kids come in. Um, I don't know the day to day, but I know that we need somebody with experience, hopefully somebody with vocational experience, because I do think it's very different to be the principal of a vocational school than one of a comprehensive school. Um, it's, just, it's just different. Um, not that it can't be done. Um, and I hope that I would be able to just be a part of recruiting the pool um, and making the selection. But uh, I have one more thing. There's, I, I don't know how the substitute thing is going here. Um, but there's not a lot of applicants, right, for teacher jobs, for never mind vocational jobs, for principal jobs. So a part of this posting, a part of filling this position needs to be recruitment. Recruit somebody into, you know, we need to, everybody needs to call your cousins, you know, whatever, call everybody you know to make sure um, we get the best candidate. And um, and bring them to Minuteman because it is it's a tough pool. Yeah. So whenever I hear anybody say we're looking for experienced people, you know, I think every, <clears throat> everybody would love to have somebody experienced. But I just want to share an experience with you. I was in the Westford School Committee for 15 years, and we had one of those years. We need to hire a principal, and we didn't have a lot of candidates, and we were all frustrated by that. And there was this one candidate who was so young. Oh my goodness, we're all worried because this person was so young. She ended up being the best, hands down, the best principal we ever had. And when she left, there was this outpouring in the community. Everyone was so sad that she, she brought so much. So I hope that we have the, um, the broad perspective, given that there's a shortage of people in so many fields in education, to entertain and have the vision for what it is we're looking for. And there could be somebody out there who's never been a principal but who has what we need um, in this very important role. So I, I hope they, they keep that thought. That's, thank you for sharing that. And definitely send her an email. I was just going <laughs> <laughs> to Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so you have a bunch of, of different audiences. You have the School <laughs> teachers, you have the students, you have the parents, you have the lawyers. <laughs> what group do you think is going to cause you the most pain? <laughs> the most pain. And how, how are you going to handle that? And which lawyers? I mean, there's just, and each group has its own factions. It, it does. Um, so, because I've been an administrator for so many years, I have dealt with lots of pain, <laughs> lots of lots from lots of different places. Um, how I deal with the stress yeah. is I have learned not to take things personally, um, e even though that is hard, um, but I have been doing this for a long time. 
Um, I make sure that I step back um, and focus and try to keep people around me focused on doing what's best for kids, number one, um, because that's why we're all here. Um, but I, I think that, um, I think that I have a very um, high tolerance uh, for difficult situations. But, it's, but it seems like each group might have its own skill set that you need, like, because we have all these different school districts mm -hmm. with their, you know, with their committees that you to talk to, like, mm -hmm. how... So we have to talk to them, basically, when we share what we're doing um, with the assessments and things like that, and... I, you just have to know your crowd. I, I can yeah. give you an example of today, um, I met with students and I knew I was going to have lunch with students and I didn't know who they would be, but I thought there'd be some awkward lulls because it would be some students with this lady in a suit who they don't know. And um, so today I, uh, you want to tell them what I did? Can you explain that? Sure. Um... Her children gave her a, a list of, of things that she should not bring up. <laughs> and then she did. So I did. So I said, uh, you know, I said, look, my kids told me not to use the word Riz. They told me not to use, not to do a vibe check. They so I prepared. No, I literally did. I prepared. There's a note on my phone that I did not read to you. Uh, but I was worried about sitting. I didn't know how long this lunch would go. And I, I was like, okay, um, that's how I'm preparing for the children. Um, for all of you, I just need to make sure that I'm hearing whatever you have to say. I, I didn't, I was bracing myself because sometimes there's, you know, people who have had bad experiences who don't want to have them again and ask tough questions. You've all been very kind to me right now. Um, if, uh, if there is another group that I need to prepare myself for, I, I do my homework and, um, and I come prepared. question has nothing to do with this. How old are your boys? <laughs> oh, so I have uh, my youngest is 12. If you want, I can show you pictures of them flexing. They're ridiculous. <laughs> um, the youngest is 12. My daughter is 14 and my oldest is 16. He's a junior and they all have birthdays in March. March 9th, March 10th, and March 22nd. I didn't, you would think I'm organized, but I did not plan that. <laughs> June, I don't know. <laughs> but I am, uh, just so you know, here's, and I'm going to put this out here too, um, because I am a mom and I do have kids. Um, my husband, since I went to Southeastern Regional, has been a stay at home husband. Um, we had this deal where whichever one of us got to a certain um, salary, the other one would stay home with the children. So I think I won. Some people think I didn't win, um, but he has been the most wonderful um, diaper changing, laundry handling. He cooks like you wouldn't believe. Um, one, if, if it weren't for him, I would not be able to be as tough as I am and caught all the time in that I need to put in. Um, like today, I don't have to worry about any rides or anything like that. He, he does it all. We, we live in a small village, but... Um, that's, that's what we do. So when it comes to the personal side of managing, uh, there is no question in my mind, um, that I can't give, um, myself to Minuteman and what you want me to do. But I won't miss wrestling tournaments, just so you know, they're not <laughs> a big thing I have. I have to. All right. That's fair. Thank Makes you. sense. Yes. So is the commute, do you live in Situate? Is the commute going to be an issue? I don't live in Situate. No, <laughs> I, I live in Rainham, um, and coming here is about 10 minutes shorter than to Situate. And what I do for my commute typically is um, I save all of my phone calls um, for um, the commute, mm -hmm. and I, I don't use them <clears throat> hands free. Very, <laughs> safe <about laughs> Very safe about it. But that's, that's what I do. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I had a very short commute to Southeastern and I would find that I'd get home and I'd still be all amped up, not ready yet. But, you know, that driveway sitting before you go in. 
So um, I, I, now that I have this lovely de-escalation piece, it's, uh, it's been fine and I, I enjoy it. Hello. Um, when I get the job, are there any like big changes or ideas that you've always wanted to implement at a vocational school that you might have planned? Oh, any anything that I look at? <laughs> any. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I think today, seeing that um, building that used to be a school and it's just empty and waiting to be used, I think that is super exciting um, to to get some sort of partnership with. Some business or outside agency to have more things right on our campus so that's something that was exciting i my what i love the most and i know this isn't a new thing um but as as a child as a as a vocational student myself i can't wait if i am selected i would love um to be ramp up our skills usa involvement i think it's the most wonderful program ever i love it um and that to me is really exciting i know you had that video you had that national winner last year i love to have <laughs> um, so that's okay. no pressure <laughs> <laughs> did anything surprise you today at all Good surprise. <clears throat> I was surprised by the empty building. That I was surprised. I didn't know that. You know, I was like, wow, that's that's got to be a priority. We can't just have that. Um, I, your built the this physical building surprised me because it is just the most beautiful. Your shops are so clean. Um, they are in such beautiful shape. So that was a, that was a surprise. Um, the kids didn't surprise me. Your uh, your theater that surprised me. Okay, they were watching um, Crouching. Crouching Tiger. What is it? Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and that was just the most beautiful space. And I I just you're so lucky to have this. So that surprised me. Um, and I was also very thankful that um, your MSB project is over. <laughs> it's like, oh, that sounds relieving. Um, <laughs> any other questions or uh, you know what i can stick around i think am I, are we good on We're okay um i can stick around if anybody wants to ask individual questions or um anything like that but um i would encourage you to talk to a member of the um, first interview committee if you want to check out my history of commitment um, and that I do think better than the resume gives a broad picture of um, what I would bring to the table for Minuteman as an administrator. And thank you so much. Thank you.